Psalm 119. And all we're going to do is just read Aleph. Okay. How blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. They also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. You have ordained your precepts that we should keep them diligently. Oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I shall keep your statutes. Do not forsake me utterly. Now we just got through talking about who? Mm -hmm. You think this fits him? You think this fits him? Noah? Yeah, look at this. I mean, it was yeah. just, I was just drawn to it. It was like we talked about the fact that he was blameless, which blameless, Miss Lisa, it means it did not mean he was sinless. This word actually means there's no genetic defect. There was no genetic defect in Noah's genealogy. That's why he was spared. His family was spared on the boat. Everybody else in the whole world, their genealogy had been corrupted, and that's why God flooded it. Okay, so I saw this and I said, okay. How blessed are those whose way is blameless, like Noah. And he walked in the law of the Lord. He was saved because of what? We talked about this. Because of his obedience, obedience and faith. Okay, all he did was God said, Noah, it's going to rain. Build an ark. Because he built an ark, that meant he believed God and he was spared. Simple as that. It was Righteousness was imputed to him. We talked about the fact that Abraham was told to sacrifice his son because he did it and he was willing to kill him not knowing what was going to happen you know that God somehow was going to have to resurrect him because he knew that God had given him a promise and that promise was that you're you're going to be the father of many nations so if I kill this this child of mine how am I going to be the father of many nations so when God told him to do it and he was coming through he was going to do it because he did it righteousness was imputed to him God gives all of us you know, it, just one, one thing. Believe him and trust him. And then we are righteous. Believe in Jesus and, and re accept his blood as our sacrifice, and we're righteous. It doesn't take, you know, back then you had like the mythology creatures and stuff. They had to do all kinds of incredible feats. And all we got to do is believe this simple message, this beautiful, simple message that our God came to our earth as a man, was crucified on a cross for our sins. I had a lady in here today, and her, her um, brother was murdered a while back. She's never shared this with me. And um, she was just like, I just want him to be tortured. I mean, she literally was just like, I want him to know pain. Like, he, he made my, bro my brother. And I said... I said, I know. I said, I know that. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, and God loves you so much that he said, I'm going to tell you what. Somebody just attacked my little girl, and I am going to pour out my wrath on him. I am going to hurt him because how dare he hurt my little girl. And Jesus said, well, I know you're planning on doing that, but can I take it for him? And not only for him, but for you and you and you and me and everybody. So the Romans did not kill Jesus. You do know that. God killed. He crushed him, Isaiah 53 says. He is the one who poured out his wrath on Jesus to pay for all the people that have hurt you. They did get their just reward. They did get punished and it was all put on Jesus and so all we got to do is accept that and just say wow thank you just a simple message like that and we are what we call saved in a story and we live in eternity forever with our father and our, our big brother and the Holy Spirit that's it how simple is that so, so Noah 
He walked in the law of the Lord. It said, it said, remember what he said? It said Noah did what with God? He walked with God. Remember that? So, um, and, he, and he had a testimony. I know he had a testimony. He's like, you know, oh, he told his grandchildren's children he lived 950 years. I mean, he had a testimony. And, and I know he sought him with all his heart. And it just blows me. He walked in his ways, and, and he kept his, his laws diligently. And we're going to talk about the laws that God gave him. He kept his statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed. When I look upon all your commandments, I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your ju righteous judgments. I shall keep your statutes. And then what I know he had to have said this in, in the ark. Lord, don't forsake me. <laughs> Please remember me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're aware of this, Ms. Lisa, but he was on the ark for 365 days. A lot of people, even Ashley, said, no, no, it was just 40. No, 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 that's how long it rained. But he was in that ark. And, in fact, even after the water had subsided, the Holy Spirit blew on the water, and, and, the, and it, the water subsided, he still couldn't come out of the ark until God told him to. So from the moment that he walked on the ark, God said, come into the ark. He stayed on the ark for one year, and then he waited for God to say, now go. And we talked about the fact last week that he says that to us too. He says, come to me. All you who are weary and laden and overburdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for it's easy and my burden is light. And then when we are refreshed, when he becomes our, our shepherd, when we are, our, our souls are restored, he says, now go. And it's the same message. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is Noah. And so I just, you know, we haven't talked about Hebrew for a while, and it's very simple. It's nothing hard. But I just wanted you to see some Hebrew words, and I wanted you to see, again, the, he the Hebrew um, language is just absolutely incredible because it's a language, like, if you look at the letter A, does it mean anything in our vocabulary? It don't mean anything in our vocabulary. But if you look at their A, their A is the Aleph, and it means something. It, it means strength. An ox. It means leader first. So you read Hebrew from, from right to left. Okay? So you're looking at that big X, you know, where it says blessed on, on the right side. That's the first letter, and we're going to go to the left. Okay? So the first word is blessed. And the word means to set fire on their head. Now just think of that for a second. To set fire on their head. That's a person who's blessed. Remember that passage that says when your neighbor does something wrong to you, what does it tell you to do? Yep, burning coals upon their head. So you're looking at Aleph, Sheen, Resh. Okay, that's the letters, Aleph, Sheen, Resh. So Aleph means strength leader first. Sheen means to consume or destroy, and Resh means head. So blessed means to set fire on their head. Way, the door a person covers. So you got cough, race, dalet. So cough means to cover, race is person, dalet store. Isn't that amazing? Now get this one. Torah. What comes from the man nailed to the cross? Who was nailed to the cross? Jesus. And he is the what? Word of God. So Torah is he, race, vav, tav. And he means to reveal. Race means a person, vav is nail and Tav is sign or covenant. Isn't this amazing? Testimony. See the door and sign. First-hand knowledge of what happened. So you got Tav, Vav, Dalet, Ayan. So you got sign. Tav means sign. Vav means hook or nail. Dalet means door. Ayan means to see or an eye. And it means right there. See the door and sign. First-hand knowledge of what happened. That's a testimony. What do we do? Miss Karen was given her testimony. It happened to her. And so we know firsthand knowledge. Now, I like this one. All means uh, cough and lamed, to open the hand. Get this, though. To open the hand of the staff. So open the hand, and then lamed means control. 